Good morning, everyone. I was given just uh, 20 minutes, you know, the, by, I was supposed to uh, the finish by 8.50, so that uh, you know, the rest of the story can be uh, the obtained by the, the uh, 8.3.6, you know, that, that is uh, the technical session. The Metokana is another uh, hybrid which returned to Earth and, uh, the, uh, this uh, June, the June 13th. And uh, we are sure that the, the, uh, the missions are uh, the outline. And uh, let's see, it doesn't work, right? And the, the spacecraft and uh, the, uh, the launch uh, in 203. And uh, they made uh, the uh, uh, rendezvous with an asteroid uh, in the September of 2005, and stayed uh, there about uh, two and a half months. And uh, it uh, was supposed to return to the Earth in uh, the year 2007, while that, uh, the uh, incident of the leak, uh, fuel leak occurred, and uh, the return was postponed to three years, and uh, it uh, they returned to Earth in uh, the uh, June of 2010, this month, this year. The spacecraft weighs about 510 kilograms, including that the fuel, chemical fuel, and the xenon propellant oil gas, and over 130 kilograms. And uh, the, it is uh, the, uh, actually that uh, uh, technology demonstration mission that, that is not exactly a scientific mission, and uh, which you know the aimed at uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, a round trip and uh, the technology. A flight to and uh, return from that uh, extraterrestrial object, uh, asteroid, and uh, it consisted of consisted of the of, uh, five and the major you know technology and uh, demonstration items. One is an ion engines cruise, and the second one is an autonomous guidance navigation using optical measurements. Since the uh, that uh, uh, even the, the the radio communication takes about an uh, almost 40 minutes you know for round trip. So any kind, uh, anyhow, that, that uh, some uh, autonomy must be uh, incorporated. The third one is uh, the, uh, a sample collection under the microgravity environment from the asteroid surface. And the force and technology uh, demonstrated was uh, the uh, direct re-entry for sample recovery from interplanetary trajectory. And the fifth one was added to compensate for the, the, the transportation capability deficit the, when the, the target to the asteroid was changed to a new one, Itokawa. So that is a combination of low thrust and the gravity assist technique. And uh, the spacecraft also that carried a uh, lot of uh, the other you know, the new technology to us. You know, the, the, some of them are still an important one. You know, that, that was uh, the, you know, the intended uh, at the middle of uh, the 90s. That the, the project started in 96. You know, so that these, these are the old news. But uh, the, uh, the, uh, at that time, middle of 90s, and uh, they are, some of them are the very new to us. The concept of a sample return from an asteroid started even 25 years ago when that, uh, our first uh, the, uh, uh, interplanetary probe was launched in 85 you know, the, to Comet you know, Hare. And uh, as an EU of 1985, we had a uh, first workshop for a uh, sample return mission from an asteroid. And uh, the, uh, the trajectory design, the mission concept was started in 86. However, that, uh, the, at that time, that the, uh, it's too, it was too early for that the spacecraft to be developed in a sense that they assumed that the uh, chemical proportion only. So it took uh, almost 18 years to have uh, the actual launch of uh, the, the spacecraft propelled by ion engine. The spacecraft uh, carried uh, four ion engines has here, and uh, this, this is a spacecraft and uh, the uh, picture, and most of the, the, the sensors and the uh, optical measurements on the devices are concentrated at the bottom surface of the spacecraft. And uh, that it, it was a challenge, you know, even to even the, the accessing to uh, the 500 meters meters object at a distance of uh, 300 million kilometers. It was a challenge, and uh, in order to you know the, uh, accomplish the, this and uh, the uh, uh, you know the mission, the spacecraft and the, the photograph that the uh, asteroid Itoka from by that uh, uh, onboard and the Star Trek camera. And uh, the, uh, a combination of optical measurements with uh, radio measurements work, you know, combined, and the, uh, to make the to have uh, the uh, much more accurate and uh, the uh, navigation data that enabled uh, the spacecraft to reach and uh, this uh, small object over uh, the 500 meters size. 
The, this is under the, uh, the star map, and uh, the, this, this is under the, uh, uh, the direction of Itokawa was photographed, and this is a solid line that stands for that, uh, uh, expected or predicted the uh, direction of Itokawa from the, the uh, spacecraft. And uh, here is uh, the difference, you know, difference or the discrepancy, and that the information, uh, orbit information, uh, had been updated gradually, so that uh, Itokawa you know, the, was uh, photographed to that the intended uh, directions. This is another uh, uh, hybrid navigation, which was actually uh, performed uh, almost for the first time. The spacecraft and the digital and they uh, you know, arrived at uh, the uh, uh, asteroid Itokawa and, uh, on September 12th uh, of 2005. And the uh, spacecraft, it, you know, however, so it was uh, the actual robot, you know, robot, you know, the, and the uh, spacecraft and uh, the, the, the FATA, you know, the, the deployed and the, the retroreflective seats, you know, that the target marker as uh, the navigation aid on the surface of the asteroid. And uh, the, those uh, target markers were you know, illuminated by that flash lamp aboard. And uh, the spacecraft car is equip was equipped with an onboard image processing capability. So that uh, taking that advantage of visual feedback, the spacecraft made an landable with uh, the target marker so deployed on the surface of the, the uh, uh, surface. This is uh, the uh, function and this, you know, the, a maneuver was uh, a, a, actually uh, performed as planned, so this is shows that uh, the spacecraft however, so was uh, the actually robot. And the spacecraft and uh, the uh, successfully uh, they made uh, the uh, accurate and uh, the uh, you know the access to that the intended area here. This is uh, the what we call Muses Sea. Sea is uh, the ocean. And uh, the, our intended point is here. And actually, that, that this uh, show this you know, the low resolution the, the photo doesn't they didn't indicate to us that the spacecraft was quite an accurately guided actually. And uh, the, here is an uh, target marker deployed uh, in, the, the, uh, in previous week when the, the spacecraft made an uh, first an access to the surface. The, this is a photograph that uh, taken by the spacecraft navigation camera that uh, on November 26th of the, the, the 205. The, the, as I said, that the, this is uh, the Muses Sea Ocean, and the target marker was de deployed here. Then the first touching down point, point was drifted to here, and second that touch touchdown, touchdown point was here. And uh, since uh, the Muses Sea you know, weather is uh, just uh, 40 meters long, so the, uh, we had had have enough wor worm speed, the one centimeters per second control, uh, should, be, should, should have been that the. Uh, uh, must have been that they, you know, they are controlled at a distance of 300 million kilometers from the Earth. This is one of the biggest an achievement we did for that, the guidance navigation, guidance and the navigation. And the target marker, you know, they are carried under the signatures, you know, from the, the 880,000 people from the world. And uh, I do not mention about the sciences, the science details, you know, that today. Uh, that it was uh, the, uh, you know, summarized in the, the uh, various kind, various uh, journals already. However, that uh, simply that uh, one of the major discovery you know, that we had is uh, the spacecraft, you know, the, you know, the uh, observed that the Itokawa uh, was uh, simply a uh, double pile object, which was actually the first that uh, the, uh, you know, um, uh, show, showed up, uh, uh, you know, that was uh, the proved you know, for the first time. The spacecraft and uh, the uh, suffered from the many difficulties from the, the, uh, the launch. The, the here is uh, two, the September of 2005 is uh, the when that the spacecraft that arrived at the asteroid. Even before that arrival, the first reaction wheel was lost. And uh, during that the, uh, you know, the in proximity phase and second reaction wheel was, oh, wheel was also lost. And when that the, the, the uh, spacecraft accomplished uh, the second touchdown and lifted off, lift off the, the fuel leak uh, incident occurred, and the gas eruption tumbled the spacecraft in, in December of 205. And uh, the uh, spacecraft was, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know uh, <coughs> we got a uh, loss of contact with the spacecraft for seven weeks. And uh, the miracle restoration uh, you know, uh, was accomplished in January of 206. And from that point, uh, the xenon cold, cold gas and uh, the uh, you know, system and uh, the uh, new you know, the attitude controlled by a uh, solar radiation talk was in, you know, incorporated. And the, uh, that uh, saved uh, the, the xenon gas amount and uh, that enabled the spacecraft to be uh, propelled by the uh, ion engines to back, to back home. 
The January that uh, of 2007, that the red over the capsule was closed, and that in 2007, the first half row that the iron engines, you know, they were accomplished, and that they are from 2009, that March to April, the second half of engine they were started. However, that the November row, but last year, that the iron engine, you know, the, you know uh, reached to that the all iron engines reached to that the end of life. But uh, the new, you know, iron engines configuration, the, you know, that started you know, the, uh, from the, the November of 2009 last year. The xenon gas, you know, was, was uh, the, you know, uh, stored aboard the, uh, to, as uh, the uh, uh, propellant for uh, the ion engine that was used to, you know, for that, uh, you know, attitude control purpose and uh, together with a uh, solar radiation token uh, that uh, made, made on the spacecraft and that uh, the, uh, you know, the attitude articulated by the balancing solar torque from the ion engines by the solar radiation torque. And uh, when that the, we, we had uh, the difficulty, or that we had an uh, end of life for all ion engines, we you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, take, took the major neutralizer of ion engine A, is, was combined with an ion source of the ion engine B, taking the advantage of the, the bypass diode embedded at the fabrication process. And uh, that, uh, from, from this uh, the, uh, you know, the technique, uh, we you know, the avoided the, the difficulty and the spacecraft and the crew and that they continue the voyage back to back to Earth. The the um, the, space, uh, the, the capsule was uh, the released you know the three hours and the prior to the entry, uh, and the, the uh, as this and uh, the view uh, shows and that uh, the you know, the forward and the backward shell was and uh, the deployed and uh, the jettisoned. And the uh, the back shell, back well shell that they, uh, they extracted that the parachute, and this is in the portion of that the capsule, the, the main pair pair of the capsule, and the parachute was deployed under five kilometers altitude. This is a photo of uh, taken at an Umel desert in uh, this June. That the the, the the entry was quite bright, almost two times as you know bright as the uh, full moon. And that the, even that shadows over that the uh, vehicles and the personnel are, are, are you know this glimpsed here, and that there were, were two you know big pro explosion that they, during the re-entry of mother ship, and the, the, from this direction to this direction the you know the uh, capsule you know trailed the uh, its line of light in the sky, and uh, we made another uh, spacecraft to you know to see that uh, it's and that the home you know the planet and the Earth and the, by its naked and the camera. And the way that the, you know, the operation was not required to, you know, the, uh, once the spacecraft was you know, the separated, but then the old staff and the, you know, the agreed to, you know, have this last operation to have uh, the last shot of that they are the Earth. The landing point and control, you know, the estimate was quite accurate. The, here is a, this is a trajectory we predicted that they are, uh, before the entry. And the prediction said that the, uh, at the altitude of five kilometers, and that the you know the parachute was deployed and uh, blown by that uh, east wind to you know that the, the space the, the capsule and you know, the parachute you know the, uh, will move to the west. And uh, the what was wind that the uh, you know we expected to have at the uh, the, uh, the capsule equipment is here, but actually the wind that the capsule was you know the, uh, recovered is here. This is a grid of one kilometers by one kilometer. So this means that the, uh, the prediction accuracy was almost under 500 meters accuracy. Then immediately after that, uh, you know, one hour, you know, fr the, uh, from the entry that uh, this and uh, the capsule, you know, the equipment module, instrument module was uh, the actually uh, localized. This is the photo taken by the DC agent of NASA that the, uh, the it, here is another uh, the capsule, re-entry capsule, and uh, you know, in the context, in, in, the, the mother ship, you know, the, uh, disassembled and the, uh, you know, the, the, these are the two explosions of the, the xenon gas tank and the, the oxidizer tank. And uh, as this and the slide shows, and the, uh, the re-entry capsule successfully and deployed and re-entered into the atmosphere. The, within a one hour, as I mentioned, the, this was and the, uh, you know, taken by the, the helicopter, you know, the, you know, even at the night. And this is in the forward shell, you know, the discovered. And this is a forward shell of the, the, the portion which was discovered. And uh, this is a back shell shell of the, the uh, you know, capsule, which was also when, that they, when discovered. And the first uh, activity performed at the desert is, was uh, the uh, removing, removal of a pilot devices you know, from, the, uh, from the capsule here. And uh, 
the capsule was uh, transported back to the, the, the uh, curation facility in Japan five days later, and uh, it went that uh, you know the, the capsule, you know the equipment module, instrument module was uh, not the uh, unpacked, and uh, this is another uh, the uh, you know the instrument module unpacked and inside which another uh, uh, sample container, you know he, this one uh, was another uh, 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 installed. And uh, this one was uh, like the, it looks like very new and uh, brand new. And uh, the, this is another uh, 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 instance of opening the, the sample container at the curation, the vacuum chamber. And uh, the when that the uh, uh, catcher, you know, sample catcher was extracted, you know, this is a sample catcher. This is under uh, the uh, sample container. And uh, the, we found that the, uh, the some of the many other fragments at the bottom row of the container. Also, that uh, even that the inside inside the inside the catcher room A chamber A that uh, some of the minute and the particles were already in the, uh, discovered. And uh, talking about the curation status and the sample analysis status, uh, the from the June 18th, JAXA had conducted the task of opening the, the lid of the, the uh, sample container. And uh, so far, that uh, we found that the tens of minute particles are identified even inside the catcher A chamber A, and that the uh, the curation team is trying to establish that the method of how efficiently those particles are, can be corrected, and that the uh, we think that the still that they takes a few more months, you know, the, you know, to to correct as many particles as possible, and we we'll initiate uh, the uh, analysis, you know, the, uh, in December. And any conclusion, you know, the, whether that, that the particles are, you know, asteroid origin or at the Earth and the origin, the, that will be uh, concluded in the next spring, February, February, March. The, the activity was participated by that, the international scientists, and this is uh, one typical figure, picture of the micro manipulator operations, that, which was actually introduced. And we think that the, uh, you know, the, uh, we continue to, you know, uh, inherit the spirit of the Hayabusa to have a new technology demonstration. This is an, uh, one you know, typical example, Icarus, and which was launched at this main and uh, that successfully deployed on the uh, large uh, membrane in space. And uh, we think that the, uh, the Hayabusa activity can be extended and applied for the future, you know, the uh, great voyage you know, the in solar system activity based on the deep space port constructed at the Lagrangian point. And the, the application may include a kind of the resource utilization from the asteroids you know, in the future. And uh, they, uh, that such an uh, uh, this and uh, the high uh, you know, the technology can be an uh, extended applied you know, for future. Now, what comes out from the high is summarized here that uh, it was a great and advance in solar system exploration. The method of the round trip exploration, including the surface activity, was the first, for, for the first time demonstrated in actuary. And the uh, new scientific return regarding the small bodies was uh, that they obtained uh, even from uh, the uh, inside to the observation. And we think that possibly the asteroid origin minute particle samples may be obtained from the catcher recovered. And uh, we will uh, transmit any uh, the scientific update uh, whenever available. And uh, Japan will put on a successor mission, Hayabusa 2, for more primitive bodies, C type and asteroids, you know, they, uh, that are the object we think that should start from uh, the, uh, the even, you know, uh, the, the, uh, from this, uh, this October. That's all my talk. Thank you very much.